Hey everybody, Joel Lavaca, lead educator for Fringe, back again. And this time I'm going to ask you to play a little game with me. I'm going to ask you to imagine. I'm going to have you imagine you are the quarterback of your favorite football team. You're down by three in the Super Bowl, no timeouts. Coach calls in a play. You break the huddle. Ball snaps into your hand. It's do or die. You're scrambling around, and then you see your receiver wide open in the back of the end zone. Play out the rest of that image and scenario for me. Other one I want you to think about. You're at work. You have to give a really big presentation to some investors. And your presentation will essentially determine if these investors participate with your company or leave for another firm. So your job and the jobs of a hundred other people are resting on how you can deliver this information to a group of investors. You settle down, you hit start on your PowerPoint and now envision again, the rest of that meeting and how it goes. I hope that you guys were able to envision something positive, but now, what if I were to ask you to envision strength training your bicep as hard as you can without actually strength training your bicep? Or thinking about your gastroc or your Achilles tendon take load while you're walking or jumping or sprinting or running. Sometimes that seems a little bit more odd, especially when we bring them into a rehab or healthcare setting. I can imagine me and my team winning the big game. I can imagine pitching a perfect presentation to get investors to believe in me and my company. But when it comes to changing qualities about myself or my body, that's where things are too much for me to handle. And I'm here to challenge that in our newsletter this week. In our newsletter, I talk about the power of imagination and brain plasticity. In it, I present two really interesting research articles, one in fine motor acquisition with two groups learning to play the piano, and one with strength training with one group physically strength training and another group imagining their strength training. And I hope you have time to read the article, but I'll share the results with you. When it comes to imagining practice, or devoting time in a mental effort versus physically performing an activity, there is some evidence to suggest that when we are learning something new, our brains don't necessarily distinguish if we are actually doing it or merely imagining doing it. And that is pretty intriguing for me as a physical therapist, especially trying to help people cope with long-standing pain. A lot of my clients feel like they don't have the time to do certain things. They feel pretty badly if they miss a day or they feel obligated to do certain things because of what other providers have told them. And when I offer them the idea to reframe their pain or think positive or think more concentrated on an effort that they want to accomplish, it sort of feels a little wishy-washy. Like we're not actually following science and instead I'm offering them some sort of magic. There is science to imagination. And one of the greatest thinkers of our time has one of my all time favorite quotes on imagination. And that's Mr. Albert Einstein. So check out this week's article, do some concentrated mental practice and see if it makes a difference in your pain or performance until next week. Take care of yourself and take care of each other.